Today, we are going to be looking at how to create a FOV slider on the player character. Let's get started. So I have a game menu here. There's not a lot going on. It has a label for camera FOV in this HBox container. Uh, that's all I've got. If you want to pause the game while you are in your menu, which is pretty common, you must ensure that this parent node in your canvas layer is either set up to when paused always at least one of those two i like to use always just so that if i decide to process this menu outside of a paused game state it'll still work so the first thing i need to do is i need to create the slider so i'm just going to add in a h slider and i'm also going to add in a label so that we can reflect what the value of the slider is the default values or the standard values are 60 to 120 use what you feel is right the value is going to be 60 to start with. That doesn't actually matter. We're going to set that via code one step and then the rest doesn't really matter. The one thing that we do want to do is make sure that this has a minimum size. So I'm going to come in and just give this a 200 pixel minimum size. There are other ways to do this, but because mine's in an HBox container, it's going to get compressed. So I'm just going to do that. Um, for this, I'm going to give this just a, an example value that we're going to reset via code. Okay, so that's the basics of it. I'll rename these nodes FOV slider and I'll name this one FOV label, nice and simple. Okay, so I'll come to the game menu object and I'll create a script. I've got a folder set up called settings that I am going to add this to. I'm going to go there and I'm going to save this and create it. We don't need the process, we can get rid of that. Um, and Right now, we're going to set up the pause and showing side of it. So um, we uh, might as well, while we're here, get access to these two elements because we need them. So you can uh, grab them and control, click and drag them and they'll show up there. We're not going to use them right now, but we'll just put them there. Okay. So if we want to pause, we need to add an input function. And if we want, I'm going to use the uh, escape key, but you can set up a custom uh, key if you want. Um, so I'm going to go if event dot is action pressed and I'll just write UI cancel. So that's the built in one. Okay. So I'll just type pass here for now. What we do need to do is have a way to tell the system that we're paused. And I've been experimenting with a few different ways, but I think the easiest way is to create a variable called in menu and it's a Boolean and it's, it's going to be equal to false. So I'm going to go in menu is equal to not in menu. So I'm going to inverse it every time the button's pressed. This will just act as a toggle and the visibility of this node will be set to in menu. So we need to pause. We don't need to, but if you want to, you go get tree dot set pause and we can just pass in that same variable in menu. And then the last thing we want to do is make sure the cursor is visible. Since I'm operating with a FPS controller, the cursor is normally captured. I'm just going to check if in menu. And if we are in menu, we want to go input dot set mouse mode. And we'll set that to uh, mouse mode visible. You can also use confined if you want to, but we're going to go with visible uh, else. And we will just set it back to being captured or whatever yours is. And if we hit play here, well, the menu is going to be visible, which is not very nice. So I'm going to turn that off for a second. One thing you can do with things that you want to be hidden all the time. And then all you can do is in the ready function, you can go hide because you know it needs to be invisible when you start. So then we've got it here. It's just a regular FPS controller. We can press escape. Our slider shows up. It's not doing anything at the moment. And when we press escape again, we go back to the game. Okay, nice and simple. Okay, so now we need to connect up this slider with our settings. So we're going to create a script here in the menu. We're going to come and right click this, create new script. And we're going to call this global settings. It's going to inherit from the resource class. We'll create that and then we can click into it. We'll give it a, a name. So class underscore name equals global settings and it's going to consist of an export variable this will just be all the settings you want um, we're going to just do one for the sake of brevity which is the camera fov uh, this is an int default we'll make it 75 because that's what the camera defaults to and we'll need to create a set so what you can type is a colon 
and then the word set, set it equal to, and we'll make the function and we'll call it something like set camera FOV. Put a comma here and I'll create a get as well. You don't necessarily need a get, but I'll make one called get camera FOV. So that's how you do set and get functions in Godot. Bonus, we need to make these functions. So um, I'll come down here, type func set camera FOV. This is going to take a value of type int and return void. And all we're going to do is go camera FOV and set it to the value. I need to create the getter function as well. So we go func get camera FOV. That doesn't take anything, but it does return an integer of FOV. And we'll just type return camera FOV. Okay, so this is all fine. It's not happy with that because I've misspelled camera here. So we'll just crack that. Okay, so now that we can update the camera FOV, how do we communicate that that's updated? Now we're gonna do it with a signal in this case. So I'm gonna create a signal called on camera FOV updated. And it will send an FOV and it'll be a type int. This doesn't actually do anything because it really is just for when you connect things up, but it does help readability. Once the we type set camera FOV value int, we set the value, we want to emit that signal. So we'll type on camera FOV, we'll just emit that with the camera FOV. And I can't spell camera at the moment. I've got a new keyboard, it's really difficult. Okay, so now that we have the settings, how can we access that? Now, there's a couple of ways that you could do it. If you didn't want to have like a global settings that is accessible via a singleton, you can really just create the variable within your settings menu. But since we need to communicate this information to the character and the character in this simple example is just a simple scene. So I could, you know, create a signal in the game menu and connect it directly the manual way. Um, in a more complicated scene, you want a way of doing this where you don't need to do that. And so we can do that with a singleton. Um, so I'm gonna create a new script again, and I'm just gonna call this one settings. You might wanna call it something more distinguished for your example, but for the sake of readability of the tutorial, I'm gonna make it simpler. I'm gonna to come to the project settings up here, and I'm gonna to go to auto load, open this up, navigate to this settings and just add it we can leave the ready because we will use that eventually. And the, the really the only thing we want is a global settings variable. Um, I'm going to type it. I don't know if that's going to help me in my testing. That didn't really make a difference, but um, I'll do it anyway. So um, global settings dot new. We don't need to create a, a resource file. We just want to get access to one and we'll just create it like this. Okay, we'll hit save there. And so when we come back to the game menu, we can start to connect up these signals. So I'm going to create a function for this. So I'm going to call it uh, connect FOV settings. because so there's a few things that we need to do. Um, this is going to return a void. And so we need to connect the FOV slider as we change the value of the FOV slider, we wanna be able to update the global settings. So with a slider, we have a signal called a value changed that we can use. So we will go to FOV slider dot value changed dot connect and it'll take a callable. So we can just um, call on the singleton and global settings dot uh, set camera FOV. And we also want to update the number of the number on the label. So we'll need to create a function for that. And I'll just call this one update FOV label. And it's going to take um, an integer. We'll just call it FOV. It's not going to return anything. And it will just type FOV label dot set text. And we'll use the function str and pass in that integer. That'll turn the integer into a string. Now, as we update, we what we want to do is connect this function to the signal on the global settings resource. So what we'll do is go settings dot global settings dot on camera fov updated dot connect, and we'll pass in this function as the callable. So what we need to do now is just make sure that we're calling this connect FOV settings 
in the ready function. So I'll come up here, I'll paste this in, and I hit save, and we'll play. And now, as we slide that, we can see the number updating. And if we go to the remote and have a look at the settings, have a look at the global settings, we can see that the camera FOV is set to 109. Okay, so now that we've got that, there's a couple of things we need to address in the UI. So when we run it, we can see that it's still set to 60 and this is still set to 60, but the default is 75. So we're gonna um, run a couple of functions here. We'll say FOV slider dot set value no signal. We could set value with a signal and have it propagate through, but I feel like that's a little less reliable. Um, and I don't really have anything to back that up. It's just a gut feeling. That's not the best way to go about doing it. So we're at global settings dot get camera FOV. I'm going to copy that because I'm going to use that again right after this. Okay, so we can just call upon the function down below, update FOV label, and paste that in again. Hit play now, and we can see that it's set to 75 and the slider updates. Okay, so now let's actually connect this to the FOV of the 3D camera. In the character body, we have a copy of the camera, so we can do it here. You can also create a script on your camera. That's perfectly fine as well. So after the ready function, just for readability, I'm just gonna put a function called update camera FOV. It's gonna take an FOV, it'll be an integer, and it's not gonna return anything. So type that, and we'll just type camera 3D.FOV equals FOV. And in the ready function, we just need to connect the signal of the global settings to this function. So the exact same thing we did for the slider, we'll go settings.globalsettings.onCameraFOVUpdated.connect and take that function and we'll just type it in there. Okay, and we also need to do the other thing, even though they're the same right now, we also want to update the camera FOV. So we'll type update camera FOV and we'll type settings uh, global settings dot um, get camera FOV and we'll close that off. And so now when we run it, the FOV will change. And that's how you make an FOV slider. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, then a like and subscribe is incredibly helpful for the algorithm. If you're feeling extra generous, you can always jump on to the Patreon or become a channel member where you'll get your name up here videos in advance, and access to my FPS rig and support if you need it. I'm Isaac from Shaft Games, and I'll see you next time.